what? I was just going, I was going through these papers because I wanted to find out exactly what she said. Martha Maurer, America is my life. I am an American for nearly 20 years. I've had one undying wish to be an American. The wish is now a reality. And I've congratulated you 465 times as we've worked together at KTAR. But I'm going to do it again. Yes, you have. Thank you, Pat. Wow. What? But what a story. I mean, it's not exactly like just going down to City Hall and saying, OK, sign me up. I wish it was that easy. Tell us about the journey. Well, I came to the United States when I was nine years old. From Mazatlan. Mazatlan, Mexico. South of the border, beautiful town. You know, beautiful by the beach. Beautiful discos and, and all, I love. So it, you say. That's you, right. I was oh, very little. Right. I was very little when <laughs> I came me. to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> but I've lived here since then. I was nine years old when I arrived in the U.S. and up until now, almost 20 years later, it's been, you know, the one wish that I've always hoped that would come a reality. But it wasn't the smoothest journey. It wasn't. In the world. No, you know, our immigration laws, without getting into politics, because that's really boring, right? Our immigration laws are very complicated, and it takes it, it takes a long time for anyone to become a U.S. citizen. I was blessed and lucky to be able to finally, about six years ago, began the application process. So it wasn't automatic. It wasn't immediate. Six years. It six years ago. That's when I actually started, and I was able to apply, and I went through many, many applications. I went through leaving this country for a few years, interviews abroad, uh, but I'm here. I'm you just caused everybody to go over a speed bump saying, wait, you had to leave the country. I don't think a lot of folks know that that's part of the deal. Well, every immigration process is different, and I'm not going to say that my case was the same as it is for everybody else. In my case, I did have to leave the U.S., and I went back to my home country of Mexico. I had to go to several interviews in Ciudad Juarez, which is a, a town south of the border from El Paso, Texas. I had to go there a couple times, interview with immigration officers, pay multiple fees, and travel down there to prove to them and to tell them, hey, I deserve to be American. I deserve to be able to have the, the possibility of one day becoming a citizen. But you were in Mexico for two and a half years? Yes. Yeah, and that wasn't even your country. You came here when you were nine, so you weren't really familiar with that culturally in any way. No, that's true. I did still speak Spanish, so that helped a little bit. But, you know, sometimes you just have to do what you got to do, and I did my best. Do you think that it is a, a process that they, that they make as complicated as they do in order to discourage people doing it frivolously? Absolutely. I think that that's definitely uh, one of the reasons. I also agree that, you know, it takes a little bit of time because they want the best people, the most qualified people that really want to be part of this community. I'm happy that even though through all the hurdles that I had to go through, in the end, I was able to, to make it. Uh, but I, I feel that perhaps if somebody else doesn't really want to, is just doing it just mm -hmm. because maybe they don't deserve it. So there is a process in place. It's not the easiest. It's not the smoothest. But I think that in the end, you just keep trying. What was the attitude of the immigration staff? In my case, I had a mix of staff that I had to go through. In, down at the consulate in Ciudad Juarez, everything is just hustling and bustling. Let's get this done. Really no personality. Once I w sat down to do my interviews with immigration officers, it was interesting. Uh, a lot of times I felt I was showing them my entire life in a stack of paperwork, and it was definitely nerve-wracking. Um, I've heard from a number of people that they can be very rude. Yes, and in my case, I, I did have one of the immigration officers was a little bit rude. I, I wouldn't maybe use that word. I think he was being very stern. Again, trying to make sure that you're not lying. You know, you're under oath when you do an interview. You're in America now. You can call him a bum if you want. <laughs> Listen, be, because I, I, there's so much to tell in the story. One of the things that I think confuses a lot of people, Martha, is I think a lot of folks think if you marry an American, you're automatically a citizen. You know, it, it's not that easy, <laughs> and but it, it, it could be portrayed as easy, and that's why a lot of people just marry Americans, hoping that they could become a, a citizen right away. 
Again, my case was a little bit different, and we actually asked for permission to be married. I don't know if that makes any sense. In like, you asked who? We asked the, the U.S. government. We petitioned for a fiancé visa before we even actually got married. Mm. So once we were granted the fiancé visa, then they gave us uh, they, they gave us 90 days to actually come back to the U.S., get married, and then continue the process. So it was exciting. It was very fast, but that was the way that we wanted to do it. We wanted to do things slow, but do things right. You have to deliver the headlines every day on KTAR radio. And here you are distributing information to a very, very large audience in America. But a lot of it has to do with immigration problems. What stories hurt you? The stories that hurt me are the stories about the children and the teens and the young adults that came here like I did when I was very young. The dreamers. The dreamers by my family members. I didn't had no idea what was happening when I came at nine years old. I can guarantee you that the hundreds of thousands of people in this country that came the same way that I did as young people had no idea what was about to happen in their lives. So those are the stories that hurt me when they don't have the same opportunities that I have today. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Pat. And it's fun to work with you, too. Martha Maurer, she's a pro. Oh, and she also happens to be an American. You met her on the morning scramble. For the century link, you make the call. Be the fourth caller at 602-224-2237 to win today's prize.